Hi, I'm Bucky Stokes from MountUpDesign.com. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about what is in God's permissive will and what is in God's perfect will. And in order to do that, we're going to be talking about food. And I know Miss Phyllis has probably already covered a lot of this, but we want to cover it from a little bit different standpoint. Um, we've got some two scriptures particularly that I want to read this morning. One is from 1 Corinthians. Let's read that from the 10th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. All things are not beneficial. Now let's, when we, when we talk about that, we're talking really about what we do and what, what we eat. The word goes on to say, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Um, let's go now to James, the first chapter, and the 16th and 17th verses. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In other words, it doesn't matter who it is, that's the way it's going to be. Um, God doesn't but play favorites, all right? But what, what we get into a lot of times when we eat something is that it's not really what God wants us to eat. Now, we, we bless the food. Why do we bless the food? Well, what we're doing is asking him to make it acceptable. Because if, if I'm eating, uh, barbecue doesn't agree with me. Phyllis gets on me all the time about barbecue. And I love it. But I will eat barbecue, despite what she says. But, and I'll ask God to bless it. Now, that doesn't mean it's in God's perfect will. If he's going to allow me to eat that barbecue, just because I blessed it, I didn't make it holy. I made it acceptable, I hope, because I'm asking him to accept it. So let's go back in time to when Adam was thrown out of the garden. God did not intend for him to be thrown out of the garden and to have to eat all the land and I'm sure he ate animals and what all. He didn't intend that for him. What about Noah? Noah was, uh, he, he ate meat. Why? Because the, the whole land was, was destroyed by, by water and it was, the food was unacceptable. So that's why he ate meat. Now we get to, uh, how about Peter? Peter wouldn't even go into an unbeliever's house because he had, under Jewish law, he could only eat certain things. So God told him, well, look, you can eat meat then. That doesn't mean that he was to eat meat every day at his own home. He was to eat meat when he was out working for the Lord, doing things for him. So this is what we're talking about. When we talk about his permissive will, we're talking about a will, that his, his will where he allows us to eat certain things. Doesn't mean it's good for us. Say, well, why, why, why would God allow us to do it? Because he loves us and because we keep asking. And a lot of times we ask him for the, for the wrong thing. Uh, but he'll, he'll let us go so far. Now, if it's something that he just absolutely won't let us do, we're going to get sick pretty quick from it, aren't we? Uh, so as far as what, is, what we eat, all things are legal. God made things legal but that doesn't make them beneficial for us. And he tries to draw that line. And what does James say? James says, our every good and perfect gift, that would be a meal, every good and perfect meal, every good and perfect food, every good and perfect meat would come down from above. He would, he would give it to us. It would be in his perfect will. So when we eat something, we ought to think about, well, is this his perfect will or are we just asking him to bless it because we like that particular thing? 
uh, one scoop of ice cream probably enough. Sometimes I want three or four though. Now that's probably not in his perfect will. So th these are the kinds of things that Paul was talking about. That all things are legal, but not all things are beneficial for us. So I hope that we can get that. I'll, I'll, I know Miss Phyllis has already covered this with you, but I'll talk with her a little bit. Maybe this is a little bit different angle. Father, we just thank you for your word, and we thank you for your, your uh, perfect will. And we ask, Father, that we would always seek your perfect will. And we ask, Father, that you are, we know that you love us, but we also ask, Father, that we, you uh, bless us with your perfect will and make us aware that sometimes what we ask for and that you approve is really not in your perfect will, but you give it to us anyway because you love us. And we thank you, Father, for that everlasting love. We just thank you so much, Father. We ask forgiveness for all of our sins from this point backward, Father. Just cleanse our slate. And Father, we just ask that you would bless those who are watching today. Bless them exceedingly today. Give them the abundant life. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Thank you. See you next time.